Today, we're talking about one of the most practical skills that you can learn in SQL, and that's case statements. Case statements are kind of like a Swiss army knife because they can be used for so many different things. They can be used to clean messy data, to transform data, and even reshape it to look completely differently. Because of that, almost every single one of your queries that you write on the job in the real world is going to have a case statement, and you're most likely going to see them in interviews as well. So they're definitely a skill that you want to make sure that you have nailed down and have in your data analytics portfolio. So in this video, I'm going to show you the main use cases of case statements for complete beginners in only a few minutes. We're going to learn what a case statement is and how it works, how we can use case statements to categorize data, both numeric and string data. And you're going to want to stay to the end because we're going to do a more advanced use case where we actually nest case inside of aggregate functions. All right, let's get down and dirty with case statements. So first of all, what even is a case statement? A case statement is basically like an if then. So if this condition is met, then do this. If not, go to the next condition. If this condition is met, do this. If not, go to the next condition. So it's kind of like a waterfall logic. If the first condition's met, it's done and it does whatever that thing is. If not, it goes to the next one and so on. So if the second condition is met, you can assume the previous ones were not. If the 500th condition was met, you can assume all the ones before were not met because it's a waterfall logic dependent on the ones above. But also don't do a case statement with 500 conditions. That's a lot. And by the way, if you wanna build SQL projects that will actually get you hired, check out my free Big SQL Energy intro course, you'll build your first data analytics mini project in only 30 minutes, even if you're a complete newbie who's never coded before. But if you're more advanced, check out my intermediate SQL course to build a portfolio with two complete projects and you'll actually get job ready. The courses are in the description below. The syntax is pretty simple. You're always going to start with case and then for each condition, you're going to have when, blah, 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 condition, then blah, 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 result. So it's going to be case, when condition, then result. You're gonna repeat that process. And then at the very end, you can have an optional else statement. The else statement will handle any values where the condition is not met. So if none of the conditions are met, the else is what's gonna be the output. But else is also optional. So if you don't have an else and none of the conditions above are met, then the outcome is just gonna be null, which sometimes is fine. Sometimes you want nulls and you're okay with nulls, but sometimes you also don't want nulls. So it really depends on your business context. After you get through all the conditions and the optional else, then you're gonna end the case statement with the word end. And I kid you not, when I first started learning SQL, I would forget end 100% of the time. So don't forget to add the word end. And then I always finish my case statements after end by renaming that new column I just made with an alias. And that tells someone what the case statement, what that column actually does. Let me show you a very simple example of how we can categorize numeric data. So let's say we have our orders table. We're gonna add in our order ID and then our price column. Let's categorize all of our prices into small, medium, and large. So we can say when price is less than $100, then small. And be sure if you want the result to be a word like small, that has to be a string data types. You have to put single quotes around it. If you remove these quotes, you're going to get an error. And then we go to the next line. So if that condition is not met, it's not less than 100. Let's say when price is less than 300, then medium. Because of the waterfall logic, and we know that each win is also dependent on the ones above, if this second condition is met, we can also assume the first one was not met because it wouldn't go to the second condition if the first one were met. And then finally, if price is less than $1,000, then large. And we're gonna rename this new column that we just created with the case statement as price category because it's categorizing our prices. Now let's look at the distribution of this new column we just made. So we have some smalls, good. We have some larges, but 20% of the values are null. So that means 20% of the values did not meet any of these conditions, which means that we have values over a thousand and none of them fell into the medium category, which is okay. So this is a super basic example of how case works, but I also showed you this to start out to show you how important it is that you have super tight logic with no holes in it. Right here, we have a gap in our logic because we failed to address the possibility that prices are above or equal to $1,000. So we've covered less than $100, so zero to 100, dependent on the first condition, less than 300, so 100 to 299, and then less than 1,000, which is also dependent on the conditions above, so inclusive on 300 up to 999. We failed to consider the fact that a price could be equal to or greater than 1,000. 
So we can fix this by adding additional conditions or we can say else extra large. And that way, if any prices don't meet these conditions, then it's gonna return extra large. And now we have no null, so that's great. We fixed that issue. If I were gonna keep working on this data set, maybe for a dashboard or something, I'd probably try to make better buckets for small, medium, large, and extra large, because again, we don't really have a good distribution here. Most of the orders fall under small, and then we have no mediums. So it's really important when you're assigning conditions in logic that you're also thinking about what is the business question I'm trying to answer and what outcomes do I really want? You also have to be really careful with else because else is just kind of a blanket default if none of the other conditions are met. So if you're not sure if your logic is super secure and tight, you might not want to use a blanket else default condition. So if you think you might have some holes in your logic or you're not super confident, you can actually define the values for the upper bound and the lower bound of your ranges. For example, you can say when price is less than 100 and greater than zero, small. If price is less than 300 and greater than or equal to 100, notice we add the equal to sign here because if we were to remove this, 100 would not fall in this category and it wouldn't fall in this category and it would end up in the else category. So that's how mistakes happen when using case statements. So be really careful. Always be very careful with your equal signs and think about whether your logic is inclusive or exclusive of the endpoints that you're defining. So I changed my extra large condition to be if the price is greater than or equal to a thousand so there's no upper bound defined. I just say if it's greater than a thousand, extra large. That way it covers my bases just in case we have a huge order come in for like 50 million. It'll be defined as extra large in the logic. And then I have this else unknown. Nothing should not fall into one of these categories because my logic is sound. But just in case a weird value comes in that isn't a typical price value, it would fall under unknown. So that's kind of a way as a data analyst to, you know, do some quality assurance and flag any potential issues. And this is a basic example of how you can use case statements to categorize numeric data. But what happens if you're categorizing string data? Let's go back to our orders table and we have our product name column. We have all of these products, laptop, mouse, keyboard, board monitor webcam and these are words so it's string data it's not a regular number data so we're gonna have to treat it a little bit differently in our case statement so let's say we want to categorize these into two different categories essentials and accessories so we're basically gonna take this string data and put it into buckets or categories that are also two string data points so we can add in our first condition which is actually gonna be combining multiple conditions into one so we can say if the product name is laptop or keyboard or monitor, then we're going to give it the essentials category. And if we end the case statement here, we can say end as product category. Now we can see for all the laptops, keyboards, and monitors, they say essentials, but we can see for mouse and webcam, the outcome is null. And that's because we didn't address those. We didn't give any sort of condition for those values on what to do with them. And we didn't specify a different default value in an else condition. So the default is just gonna be null for those. So we can add in an else condition that uses accessories, the string as the default value. So if this condition isn't met, then it's just gonna output accessories, which is fine in this data set because we only have five distinct values and monitor and webcam are the only two values that don't fall under essentials. So it's fine to use else because that's going to label the monitor and the webcam as accessories. But what happens in the real world when data is always changing? What if the company launches a new product and it's a desktop? Does that fall under essentials or accessories? It probably should fall under essentials because that's not an accessory. It's a whole desktop. It's an essential. But based on our logic, it wouldn't fall under laptop or keyboard or monitor. It it would be else accessories and kind of be mislabeled. That's why you have to be super important with the logic that you write in case statements and always be very intentional about how you categorize things and handle the default values because you don't want to put incorrect information on a dashboard or something like that accidentally. So what I would probably do if I was anticipating potential new values popping up, I would be very specific and say when product name equals mouse. Also, this is case sensitive when you're looking for strings and SQLs. So be sure you're capitalizing things if they need to be capitalized, otherwise it won't find it. So now I've added in logic for mouse and accessories that will explicitly label those into accessories. And then in my else condition, I added unknown. That way, if we have any new values or products pop up, it'll be labeled with unknown. So we're gonna see it pop up in our report or dashboard or whatever. And that's gonna tell us that we need to go back and look into the data and update the logic. That's a trick I used all the time as a data analyst because it helps you identify those issues you need to 
look into a little bit more. And that's how you can use case statements to categorize and recode string data. But I'm gonna show you one really cool thing that you can also do with case statements. You can create binary columns and flag a value. So what's a binary column? A binary column means that it's filled with ones and zeros. One means yes, it means that thing is there. It's on, the light switch is on. Zero means no, that thing is not there, the light switch is off. Creating binary columns is so important when it comes to summarizing data and doing descriptive statistics and just cleaning your data. So let's create a binary column for laptop. So we're gonna say when product name equals laptop, then one, because yes, it is a laptop, else zero. And then we're gonna end as laptop binary. And we can see for all the rows that are laptop, it has a one in the binary column. And all the rows that are not laptops, those are gonna have zeros in this column. And I can't even stress how powerful this functionality is. It comes in handy so, so much because it allows you to summarize your data further. So we can actually put this case statement into a sum function because remember the output of this case statement is all ones and zeros. And then we can sum the result of that and we can get the number of laptop sales. We will have to remove these though. And the answer is a hundred. So it basically went through and categorized each order as laptop or not. And then it summed up all the yeses. It summed up all the ones and counted all the laptops. We can actually use the average function as well instead of the sum function. And it's gonna go through all the ones and zeros and give us an average. And the average in this case is 0.2. So that means 20% of all the orders are laptop orders. And just like that, you're now a pro in creating binary columns in SQL and using aggregate functions to summarize them. So now you know how case statements work. And more importantly, you know how to clean, transform, and categorize data. This is one of the SQL skills that instantly make your queries more powerful because it's not just about writing code at this point. It's about thinking like a data analyst and actually doing cool things with your code. But case statements are still only the beginning. There's so many other things you need to learn in SQL, like window functions and CTEs and set operations. So if you wanna learn all those, check out my intermediate course in the description below, and I'll actually help you build a portfolio and land your next job. And of course, head on over to the next video where we're gonna learn all about CTEs. Bye.